Welcome to All About Sustainability. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of carbon credits. You've probably heard the term before, but do you know how they're actually calculated? Don't worry, we're going to break it down step by step and make it super easy to understand. Let's get started. First up, what is a carbon credit? Simply put, it's like a golden ticket that represents one ton of carbon dioxide, or its equivalent, that's been reduced or removed from the atmosphere. Companies and even individuals buy these credits to offset their own emissions, balancing out their carbon footprint. But here's the big question, how do we figure out how many credits a project earns? To explain, let's zoom in on a fan favorite example, a reforestation project. When we plant trees, they act like nature's vacuum cleaners, soaking up CO2 from the air as they grow. The more trees, the more CO2 we can lock away. But calculating carbon credits isn't just about counting trees, it's a little more involved than that. Here's the magic formula, carbon credits come from three main pieces, project removals, baseline removals, and leakage. Picture this, we've got a piece of land that's been stripped of trees. Right now, it's not doing much to sequester carbon. If we leave it alone, it stays that way. This do-nothing scenario is what we call the baseline. Hold on, sometimes nature fights back with a bit of regrowth, so the baseline might include some carbon capture. But to keep things simple for now, let's say our baseline is zero, no carbon being stored. Now, we roll up our sleeves and plant 1000 trees on this land. Over their lifetimes, these trees will suck up CO2. Let's say each tree absorbs one ton of CO2. Do the math, and that's 1000 tons of CO2 removed by the project that's what we call project removals. But before we celebrate, there's a catch, leakage. Leakage happens when our project accidentally causes emissions somewhere else. For example, if this land was used for farming before, and now those farmers clear another forest to keep growing crops, that deforestation releases CO2. Let's say that adds up to 50 tons of emissions. So, here's how we crunch the numbers, take the project removals, subtract the baseline removals, and then subtract the leakage in our case, that's 1000 minus 0 minus 50, which equals 950 tons. This project generates 950 carbon credits. But wait, there's one more twist, permanence. We need to make sure that carbon stays locked away for the long haul. If a wildfire burns down our forest or someone chops the trees, that CO2 escapes back into the air. To handle this, projects often set aside some credits as a safety buffer, or they're monitored over decades to ensure the carbon stays put. There's even more to it in the real world, like the type of trees, how fast they grow, or changes in the soil. But this simplified version gives you the gist. Different projects, like wind farms or methane capture, use their own methods, but the core idea stays the same. Want to dive deeper into carbon credits or other sustainability topics? Hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you don't miss our next video. Thanks for watching.